Bum bum time for toad. Bum bum time for toad. Bum bum time for toad. Time for atomic mass games. Painting of toad. That's what. That's not a very good song. Take two. Nah, there is no take two. That's the magic is gone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm your host, Dallas, and we're here to paint Atomic Mass Games version of Toad. Coming from the uh, from the upcoming um, Brotherhood and X Men releases coming up next month. Um, if you join in last Tuesday, hello everybody. Hello everybody. Um, if you join in Tuesday, uh, Mr. Wilshake painted his Toad up very dark and spooky for the Halloween season. I think I'm going to go more jovial, the, the jester, the court jester of the Brotherhood Toad. Um, I haven't really thought about this. I'm just kind of riffing right now. Um, so I think we're, let's go with some yellows and some purples. They're very complimentary. Um, accidentally started painting skin on um, vacation. So sorry I got distracted and got excited. Um, so his skin's kind of gone, but if you ask me questions, we'll go over the how I did it. Um, it's just a bunch of like little bits of green added to flesh tones. Super simple. Just add that like creepy uh, frogness, that amphibianness um, to it. So let's just go ahead and get started. And um, if you have some questions, ask them. Let's get to painting. Let's do it. Here we go. Boop. There he is. Toad in all of his splendor and glory. Absolutely love this miniature. Like I said, I kind of started painting his, his face and his arms. Um, if you joined in before, you kind of know how I approach it. I did just a peach color and I added a little touch of green. I found some like olive color and put it in that peach. I went in and I put in our red glaze and our green glaze uh, to add that depth. And then I uh, mixed those two together, make a real deep green, shadowed it. And then I brought in our, um, our lovely off-whites to bring in highlights. As a matter of fact, it looks like, it looks like, a, looks like his nose could use a little bit more of that. So let's just go ahead and get that. Just mix in a little off-white and a little olive. Let's just add a little highlights here and there. You know, like lots of little dots and makes them look moist. You know, he's he's a toad. He's got he's got wet skin. There we go. That makes that pop out just a little bit more. So this is going to just get some yellow. I got some ochres. I got some oranges. Let's go and go ahead and grab some of that. Very much like like we did with our saber tooth. I got the Zenithal Prime. Hello, Darsum. How's everybody? My mic is buzzing. I don't know why my mic is buzzing. My computer's humming pretty heavily. But I got that Zenith Prime on our toad. I'm just going to use that to my advance. I'm going to lay some yellow over there. Oh, what color is this? I do have a reference up. So I can switch that. Yeah. So that's not actually yellow there. Let's wipe that away. This is going to be yellow. So maybe my paint's just a little too thin. It's all right. Just going to make a mess. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to choose all the areas we want to be that yellow. Glaze it right over top. I don't know why my mic is buzzing. How bad is it? I didn't do anything different. I didn't do anything weird. I mean, in the course of a day, we do all kinds of weird stuff here at Atomic Mass. But that's besides the point. I 
I've been waiting a long time for uh, this miniature. Uh, I had it sculpted by one Mr. Dave Kidd, and I really enjoy the the pose on this toad. I think it's just, and Dave was really able to capture that uh, look I was going for, we were going for when we were talking about what Toad should be doing. You know, he's perched and ready. That's right, hashtag Toad Gang. Yeah, I think it's just my computer is really chugging. I might have Photoshop still in the background. That's my fault. Let's just get that yellow on there. All right. Now this hair's gonna be dark brown. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit of yellow as well. And we're gonna put some yellow on the hair. He will not be blonde. I'm gonna use this to establish some of the lighter tones in the hair though. So kind of building that in. Whoop. Don't need to worry about the underside. That's going to be caught with pretty heavy brown. Uh, my phone is, I don't even know where my phone's at, actually. I have no idea. No idea. Anyways, we, we had a lot of fun talking about like what Toad should be doing and I really like this like creeping on the wall look we got for him. You know. He's, he's pretty mischievous. So that's what I, I think was really interesting in capturing in the character in his nimbleness, right? He's very nimble. And I think this miniature really speaks to that. So I got a little bit of a uh, warm brown I'm going to mix in to that same yellow. I'm just going to do a quick blend here. No big deal. MBD. This could be a wash. I'm being pretty impatient. Like you can see that that paint's not even dry yet. That's okay. I'm just rushing right in. Leroy Jenkins. I just want some little shadows, add some of that warmth. To that orange, that yellow. You can kind of build this in wherever you want. So I like I like having a nice, we talk about burnt siennas and you know, Umbers. They're always nice tones to work with for your yellows and your oranges. Just kind of really quickly adding it to our shadows. Just keeping it off the top surfaces. All right, so let's grab a little purple. Just some nice random purple. Let's put a little blue in it. And a little uh, 
uh, white make like a nice periwinkle like I said I'm really gonna go for like the court jester version Chick did the spooky toad the more Halloween style um, which if you're following along the uh, painting protocol challenge this month is spooky so he was very much doing that so that would be fun to play with the more brightly colored toad and I think I like uh, what I like about that is like toad feels like like when you look at this Mitch you're like this is the guy that pulls wings off flies right he's not gonna he's gonna pick on the weak so I think that there's like that menace in the miniature and so by dressing him up you get this like in these brightly colored clothes you get sort of this contrast in personality and dress I think that that's interesting Thank you, Wampa. It's a, it is very nice to wear. I just took a regular old, like, nice dark taffy. And, like I said, I grabbed a little primary blue. You need a little primary blue uh, to add color. Um, and then a little white to lighten it up and desaturate it. You know, the primary blue is in there to maintain a lot of pigment and a lot of vibrancy. So you're not just adding white to purple, which just makes it very pale and pastel. Blue is a very powerful pigment. It, it's the, one of the most powerful pigments. Um, it takes very little blue to contaminate or, um, or change things. So just a little touch of blue in there helps maintain that vibrancy and depth of color without just going pastel by adding white. Um, by adding white you you get a lighter tone but it also desaturates and I don't want the desaturation I want I want some bright vivid uh, colors on my toad here he's got all these little ruffles he's got so many little ruffles these were a nice uh, um, engineering challenge actually these little ruffles we went through a couple iterations to figure out how to how to get these to work you know um, and the engineers did a really good job Mark on them did a really good job figuring out how to like get these like nice dynamic uh, ruffles around the hands and ankles some of them are actually attached to the body or the arm and some of them are attached to the hand so and they actually they actually become keys that key together so very clever engineering and like we always talk you know here at atomic mass we're all about pushing and learning and growing and developing new ideas and new skills so this was a really nice puzzle to figure out how to make uh, these these ruffles. You know, if we were doing these and if if this uh, was a metal product, we might have smashed them all down um, to make it work. But in plastic, you can get a little more dynamic. It's nice. Right there. So there's a nice base color to everything. Forgot his uh, shorts. Let's get shorts on them. Yeah, I, I, hard plastic is a lot of fun to work with. Um, 
It presents a lot of unique challenges that aren't present in other materials. Um, I said before, like I could spend, I could spend a week talking about hard plastic and still not cover um, everything I know and all the challenges. And I don't even know the most in the studio. Like it's it's such a unique and cool material to work with. But it's got challenges. All right, that's a nice base coat to all that. Start shading stuff. Let's we'll start shading stuff. So I got some of that umber we like. I'm gonna mix it into the sienna. Start shading the yellows. And of course, yellow and purple are um, opposite the color wheel. So I automatically know that the color scheme is going to work. It's going to make it very visually appealing. We're going to do kind of like exactly what we did with our saber tooth. We're just going to bring that over sort of a quick wet blend just to get some shading on everything. Like I said, nothing fancy. Sometimes we do fancy, not always. Yeah, hard plastic, uh, Dursum says hard plastic is easy, easy to mod, that's true. Which is the fun of miniatures, is making them your own, right? So if you're into modding, reposing, like hard plastic offers a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, and you got the purple and the yellow, but then also the green. So in the in the skin that I stuck in there, so you got like these really nice colors that are all working together. Got a little pur a little brown on my purple there, no big deal. We'll go back over. We'll fix it later. Got a little blop on my leg. No big deal. It's gonna be my catchphrase for today. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Mikey, hello, welcome. Sometimes it's just no big deal. Got a lot to do. No big deal. Let's just get it done. Let's just get it done. Get a little rough, sketchy. Yeah, I'm super excited.
for those uh, X-Mans to hit the tables. It's going to be awesome. Josh, are you ready to face face off against my storm? I know Josh is in here. We had a lot of fun playtesting those. My storm's all painted. I'm almost done with my uh, my X Men and my Brotherhoods. So I'm just using the same. Uh, brown as what was on the shadows of my the cloth except for I'm going much heavier and covering more of the yellow right that's going to change that look it'll make it stand out against the yellow of the cloth and we'll add a darker we'll add a darker uh, shadow to the hair to make it even more different so you're just using the same colors you're just taking it down one more time all right let's shade the purple i'm gonna grab like a dark i think our hold your blue we like and a little touch of purple make a really rich Shadow. I'm not really, there's a lot of techniques. I'm not really two brush blending. You might think I'm two brush blending, but I'm more just, more like watercoloring at this point. I'm just kind of pushing to paint around, it's very wet and loose. It's not really too much blending. Just like loosening up that paint just enough to it kind of spills around and acts almost like a wash. But I'm really just using that second brush to control where the colors lie. Let's go pretty heavy on this side. Really push that shadow. See, very simple. The paint's pretty wet. It's a little translucent. Everybody's talking about the gold team and who's all on it. I had a chance to buy Giant Size X-Men number one for 50 bucks in the mid, early mid 90s and I totally passed on it because I didn't particularly care for the grading of it um, from a guy and I regret it. Totally should have bought it. Totally should have bought it. Two 
too much of a grade snob. I hope Gamers Web UK says, uh, I hope that's understandable because of my choice to ignore a comic for grading purposes. <laughs> solidarity, solidarity. I like a, I like a, I like a, I like a well graded comic book. My Wolverine number one, I purchased in ninety two, and when I bought it. I bought a hard plastic case that has like little screws. I might have told this story. It has little screws so you screw it down and that thing has not been opened since 92. It has been in there since 92. Someday, someday I'd like to get that graded. Cause that thing is like, it, it looks really good. I don't, and I remember it being in pretty good shape. Um, but like I said, I've really been able to examine it in, well, how many, wait, let's not talk about how many years ago that was. Um, it's been a long years, um, long number of years, like, I think it's in pretty good shape though. Still just kind of washing this darker purple over top of this lighter purple, giving some depth. Something like this hand, I just kind of slap it on and then I use that second brush. It's a little damp. Kind of push it down in the crevices and creases. <clears throat> nothing terribly fancy so is everybody getting their spookies ready and posting them up on Instagram I'm excited to look and see uh, what everybody did this month for the uh, painting protocol challenge It was a lot of fun painting that spooky Taskmaster. I was pretty happy with the way he turned out. I just really like, I really like that miniature as well. A lot of fun to paint. Well, made a mistake. Second brush, a little damp, clean it up, clean it up. A little blue mixed in there, why not? You know what, watch this, take a little blue Pin that yellow, really thin it down. There we go. Adds a little depth. Adds a little depth. Let's really get in behind that foot. And the next big thing would be separating out all the little ribbons with the dark. But we don't have to go through all that today. I need to get underneath this frill, this little toad frill. All right, we got that little spot on his leg that we kind of messed up. 
So we need to cover over that. That's too light. Let's do a little patch up. Let that dry. Grab a little black. Some of that umber. Just sort of mixing something up here. Let's really shade that hair. I like to put like a really dark color where the skin meets the hair to really pull that separation. And then if we go right along, deep in the shadows, at the lower part, we use that second brush to kind of blend it up. Like I said, this will darken the hair separating it a bit from that cloth even though they're using the same colors and if you drag it over the lightest parts kind of adds that dinginess to it, right? There we go. I just got that dingy, dingy, oily hair. We can keep patching up our little mess up spot. Once again, I'm going to say it. No big deal, no big deal, no big deal. Let's add a little white to those yellows. Paint some highlights. See, I use that damp brush to kind of create a harder, sharper line. It's a little trick I picked up. Maybe you do kind of a big line. You use that second brush, you can wipe some away to get a sharper line. Oh, my blue tacks running nowhere. Just a nice little highlights. I want to highlight his hair too. Put like little little bits of really light color. I want to add to that oily greasiness, right? Got these like nice micro folds. Accentuate those. I actually spent a lot of time on his back making it those muscle groups on his back more frog-like you see he's got these exaggerated uh, uh, Marco's gonna come in and tell me the name of those here in a second can't remember the name of those but like they're to kind of exaggerate that 
amphibian sort of uh, physiology. He's not quite human anymore, is he? Those are little dots. I like little dots. Little, little wrinkle lines. Excited to get this guy on the table. All right, let's grab some of that brown and some white. Too much water. Rosy cheeked. Where are you? Oh, there. Yeah, there's a little bit of red in there. Definitely. Definitely got a little red in there. My brush is not as sharp as I want to. Uh, Wampa Stomp 64. Dallas, how often do you wet the damp brush to keep working? Um, that's a great question. Uh, it gets dampened right before I use it. So if I'm about to use it, it gets dampened. There's a little little highlights in that hair to make it look more damp. Yeah, if I go to use it, it gets it gets damp. Well, that is way too white. Let's tone that down just a touch at a touch. Throw some little highlights on our purples. Make those pop out. And this would be really fun. Like you just really want to pick all these little frills and kind of like the surface is facing towards you as a viewer and just sort of throw a little line on those right to let them stand out um, if you really want them to stand out even more you go on the other side and you take a really dark blue and you darken off these edges and you'll you'll make them stand out even further Those nice bony fingers. So I, so I love when we can get those like really cool features. Like he's got those real bony fingers, right? And we were able to actually capture those. Just use the edge of the brush whenever you can. I'm 
I'm just sort of picking and choosing where that highlight is just to let let it pop out. I need to tone that down just a little bit. With it not being so bony, the highlights shouldn't be as sharp. Those little bony fingers want really sharp highlights. But something larger, smoother surfaces, you want uh, softer highlights. And that totally didn't work. Sometimes you gotta try again. Let's just do it from this side. I think we just highlight this side. Yeah. Maybe soften that edge just a little bit. There we go. Maybe draw a little line. Boop. Cross those microfolds. That's what we want. Easy peasy. While we're waiting for some stuff, making decisions, take some brick red, tiny touch of blue. A little more red than that. Blue so powerful. Let's glaze over our brickwork. So a trick I learned is if you want the mortar in this, um, what you can do, you want that mortar between the brickwork, uh, what you can do is after this is dry, after you kind of get it where you want, uh, you can come in with like a uh, light gray. And I like using a, like a pretty heavy brush. And I sort of just mash it down in there and I kind of make a mess. It's okay um, to make a mess. But I kind of mash it down in, in between the bricks to get that mortar. And then I just wipe it away. And that might drag some of the light gray across the bricks, but that's okay because it gives it that uh, dusty, rough feeling of brickwork. So it actually kind of accentuates the effect. Um, maybe we can get to that today. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Refugee, thank you very much. I'm pretty happy with him so far. Hashtag Toad Gang, I'm all about it. We love Toad. Such an iconic and like um, long historied member of, you know, the Brotherhood. So. Super exciting to work on uh, Toad. You know, when you just think of the Brotherhood, you you know, Toad Toad is there. So super cool to get to paint him up, get him sculpted, and can't wait for everybody else to get there so we can see what. What you all do. With yours, like I said, I'm going with more of a, the court jester of the Brotherhood version, very sort of garish, periwinkle and yellow. Shik did the darker, more spooky version earlier on Tuesday if you joined in. If you didn't join in, shame. There's so many different things you could do with all these characters, but and that's what we love seeing. So you can see how that blue and that red is making really nice color from my bricks to start with. Now dry brush over this and 
such as we go. By making that ball a little darker, it lets him pop out just a touch as well. Right. All right. Let's uh, let's get some peach. Let's get some red. Let's get some yellow. Thank you, Marks. Tell you right now, the entire Atomic Mass team is pretty proud of what we've been able to do and what we've been able to provide all of y'all out there. Our goal is to make really cool miniatures and always push and grow and learn. Just, you know, sharing the hobby and the community, you know, because it's what, it's what we love and, you know, it's great that everybody's jumping in and joining in on this crazy adventure of ours. Everybody's so quiet today. No questions, not very many questions. I'm very chatty today. Y'all missing out. All right, nice base coat to that. So of course I'm gonna do the little, it's got like a little lick of slobber. I'm gonna do that green. I wanna represent that like poison spit that our Mr. Toad has. I'm going to darken this up one more time. Oh, I forgot his belt. Let's pick some of these areas and darken up. Just work some of that darker color on the undersides of this purple. Oh, I want to flip him over upside down so bad, so bad to get the undersides of these, uh, his little frills. There's like several different paints mixing together here. There's like blues and purples and I think some red just got mixed in, whatever. Like some, some weird random colors getting mixed in here and there helps add life to your paint job I always find like we did earlier we can take a little bit of that you take a little bit of some blue some of this dark blue like this it's like a dark teal you can actually put it into the yellow just in the very deep shadows It just adds like this nice, cool light uh, depth to that yellow. Just makes it more interesting, just adds visual interest to the paint job. Well, uh, Wampa Samba, you know we can't talk about anything, so doesn't doesn't do a lot of good here on the streams. We like talking about what's out.
Never know what the future is going to hold. So I'm really falling in love with this little bit of dark turquoise mixed into the yellow. So now I'm kind of going, going crazy with it. You know? Just finding a nice weird color and throwing it in here and there to add that visual interest. It's a lot of fun. Like you could take like a, I've said it before, um, like a candy apple green, and very lightly put just a little bit of highlights on the on the purple. And just even add even more visual interest. really push that shadow down there yeah. so my clown toad my garish toad it's getting a little little creepier with that with that little bit of turquoise added in makes him a little more dark doesn't take much oh Pagani is coming in with hard questions favorite affiliation use X-Men I don't I don't I, that's not how I build that's not how I build list Pagani you know that I'm all about like I'm all about like taking Ghost Rider and Wolverine just because it's Ghost Rider and Wolverine Bill, I like, I like crazy, I like crazy combinations of like characters I just love or like, um, uh, remember, remember, uh, right before, um, lockdown, we were going to the game store and I kept playing team science. Like, I don't even remember what affiliation I was playing. I'm going to be real honest. Uh, it was just, all it mattered was team science. So. I was taking Shuri, uh, Modoc, Iron Man, uh, who else was like, I was just taking anybody, Doc Ock, yeah, Modoc, it was, it's all, it was all about like just, just science, like whoever was a scientist was on team science and I was all about it, like that's just what I played. Uh, affiliation didn't matter you know I'd, I'd figure out an affiliation but at the end of the day all that mattered to me was team science team science but that's the way I, that's the way I play like Ghost Rider and Wolverine like I mean Look, I may have a whole collection of extra Ghost Rider heads. I, I don't know if I have a reason for that. I'm just saying that maybe I do have a reason for that. Who knows? Let's add some little dots, because I like little dots. A little visual interest. Let's do that candy, candy green. Let's mix a little candy green show you what this looks like very light yeah I don't think I was playing affiliated at all I was just like it's team science that's the affiliation that's a little thin let's, let's, let's just let some little candy apple green highlights appear on our purple
a little too much. A little candy apple green over here. A little candy apple green over here. Like if you look at like some famous paintings and really look at them, you'll see a lot of times uh, um, some of the masters, as as we are want to call them, you'll find like these little weird colors in places. It just adds a lot of visual, visual interest. So kind of the same thing. It just adds depth and visual interest. I'm trying to think who else I had on Team Science. It was definitely Sherry Murdoch, Doc Ock, Iron Man. I feel like there was somebody else. Peter Parker. Let's just throw some little green on the tongue. Uh, I wasn't playing with Ant Man at the time because Ant Man wasn't uh, wasn't out. It was back, yeah, it was way back in February. All right, we don't have much time. I didn't shadow the I didn't I didn't shadow the tongue yet, but that's a pretty good pretty good start. Um, we'll we'll add some shadows and highlights to the tongue, and we got a little bit of green on there to show. But we had a lot of fun painting the yellow in a different way than we painted um, our saber tooth yellow. Adding that little bit of that dark turquoise there was pretty cool, and just really added. We still got to paint his belt and um, add a little more highlights. But uh, all in all, pretty happy. Pretty good start to my menacing looking clown, uh, or uh, not really clown, jester. The court jester of the Brotherhood Toad. Um, and then we'll, you know what, real quick, real quick. Shik, you asked about this yesterday. And um, I told you, and you were like, wait, what? And um, so I'm gonna, let's, let's just try to do it real quick. So I'm gonna just take some light gray of course, I'm going to mess this up because I'm not not really ready. Yep, I'm already going to mess it up. I'm already going to mess it up. Let's get my... Let's, it's not the right brush. It's not the right brush. Let's try a different brush. There we go. Thin that out just a little bit. So, like, I wouldn't normally do this till later, but... Push some of that mortar in. Use my finger to kind of wipe it away. This could be dry brushed on. And then you're just kind of using your finger to wipe it away. But of course I'm gonna I still need to shade and highlight all these bricks. So this is a little early for this process. But the idea is here. You just kind of get that on there. And then use your finger because you're just dragging that over top of everything and it adds that dusty feel. Of course, I can't get my finger there. Yeah, I'm really in there now, so. And then we can do our blue shade, blue wash over this, and like that'll tone that down a little bit if you still wanted to. Like I like doing a blue wash over my bricks. Let's just clean some of this up. 
course we can't do a blue wash yet because we got uh, wet paint everywhere from the mortar but the idea is there get that old style um, real heavy mortar brick look so not a bad little trick we'll play with it let me switch back over here hello I'm back so hopefully that was inform uh, inf informational informative um, and um, hopefully we'll see your um, toad very soon and any of your other mutants in uh, uh, X-Man and Brotherhood coming in very very soon and remember uh, check us out on the social medias the Instagram atomic underscore mass underscore transmissions for the um, um, oh my gosh I'm reading and I kind of kind of lost track for the hashtag painting protocol painting challenge remember this month is spooky so we want to see your spooky take on your favorite Marvel characters Check us out on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest news, information, announcements, and all the other fun stuff that Josh has up his sleeve. So check it out next Tuesday. Mr. Will Schick will be back at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know what he's painting. It's going to be awesome. Join me back next Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know what I'm painting. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to keep following up with our uh, mutants and um, our fun characters that are coming up so don't miss out on that so till next time we'll check you later and uh go be heroes see you guys bye now i gotta go that oh that just fell hashtag toad gang